What's up, comic fam, comic fans? And it's time to get into this week's new comic book day hauls, and we're gonna get right into them right after this. Spartans, what is your profession? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Go ahead and throw me a thumbs up if you like the content, and comment down below. Let's get into this week's books. Let's waste no time because I gotta get packed because I'm going to C2E2. So I'll see you there, okay? But first off, we've got, this is a pickup from uh, previous week. It's the only pickup I really have from the previous weeks. Looking forward to getting to the con to pick up more books this week so it didn't, didn't go too crazy. But we've got The Death of Doctor Strange, White Fox. And what's so key about this? Well, you got the origin of White Fox. You got the origin of uh, Swordmaster. And you have the first appearance of the God of War, Chai Yu. So pick that up for 20% off cover, so not a bad deal. All right, we're getting into the rest of the books. As we know, some shops, deliveries have been delayed, halted, whatever. So sometimes I feel like my Batmans usually don't come out in the same week, but this week they did for whatever reason, um, whether my shop was late getting the books or DC was late putting them out. But anyway, we got Batman Detective number 1045, Fear State with Vile in here. Uh, this was kind of like the last um, part of that Fear State run with Vile and stuff. That was in the Mariko Tamaki run. Um, she's still doing Batman Detective, by the way, so she'll keep it up. But uh, that was kind of the end, I think, of this Vile story. And next we'll have, um, I forget what the next thing is, but it's going to deal with uh, maybe Arkham Rising. It's going to deal with the mental health situation of Arkham and all that other stuff. So, uh, pretty good book overall. Vile turns into this really big creature. Batman, again, defeats <laughs> the bad guy. And uh, we'll see where Fear State, Future State, all that stuff eventually end up. I don't know if it's done done or whatever, but this was kind of part of that whole run. And uh, I like it, it was good, it was good. All right, so next up we got Batman 118 because they're changing direction. Joshua Williamson's on this, all right? And uh, it's a new chapter. We got a new bat suit in this one, so that's pretty cool. And um, there is a new character in here. Uh, I forget the name right off the bat right now. Abyss, Abyss. But Abyss? Spoiler alert. Abyss looked a little dead. Just saying. <laughs> but we're gonna see where that leads. Uh, interesting. Uh, Ghostmaker and Clown Hunter are off to go train, so I guess they're kind of being a little bit written out of this series, at least for now, they're disappearing. And uh, other than that, you got Batman traveling out of Gotham to go help some Batman Incorporated guys in this one. Fun book, good read, it's a new creative team, I really like it. We'll see where it goes. All right, we're gonna head to Marvel now. That was my DC for the week, and my DC, and my just random pull off the shelf this week. All right. Going to Marvel, we got Amazing Spider-Man number 80. This is a beyond um, side issue, if you will, side story cover by uh, Bagley here. And so there is some key stuff in here, okay? Peter, Aunt May is helping Peter out with the help of Doc Ock. As you know, Doc Ock goes crazy <laughs> at one point, because he always does. But he does find out some interesting information about the the corporate espionage they were doing and how it's a shell corporation for the Beyond Corporation. Uh, just some awesome stuff. But at the end of it, we get the return of Peter Parker, okay? Spoiler alert, again, sorry. And uh, I like that they have the hottest couple back together. Um, in comics, right? You got Aunt May, a little Spitfire, but she does things a little different. And you got Doc Ock, more of a hothead. But he's got, he's got a, a je ne sais quoi, a way with the ladies, if you will. So, really enjoyed that issue. If you're looking for Ben Riley, he ain't in here. And if you're looking for a ton of Peter Parker, that's not going to happen. Um, this is, these are, these little side stories are, are cool. These tie-ins are cool. Um, but they usually don't give you the main character in them. So if you're looking for something that keeps you with that main character, don't get the tie-in issue. But I, what I will say is that this is a key issue in the fact that when you read The Next, Spider, uh, the next Amazing Spider-Man, you're going to be like, how did that happen? Because there's something that happens in this book that, you know, if you missed what I said earlier, good 
because no more spoilers. Um, there's something that happens earlier in this book that happens in this book that's going to affect where this title goes, okay? Next up from Marvel, we got Star Wars Crimson Rain. This is Charles Soul. Soul! He's a soul man. Okay, that's enough on Charles Soul. Anyway, I got my issues with Charles Soul. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is Star Wars Crimson Rain. We're introduced to Quira who's been in the, you know, War of the Bounty Hunters series. This is part of like a triple arc type deal. So you'll have War of the Bounty Hunters, you have Crimson Rain, and then there's something that comes after this. But what we have is we have a archivist who's telling us the story of how, you know, Quira planned to bring down the Empire. You can only guess she failed, right? Well, the movies would be different. So uh, by the end of this, we're told that this is a tragedy. The story will be a tragedy. Uh, it kind of used some real uh, Jacobian slash Shakespearean type tropes to tell the story. Um, but we won't go too deep into that. But yeah, this was definitely, it had an orator, a narrator if you will. And um, definitely an interesting way to tell this comic. It's been done before, but um, they really kind of stuck to that old Jacobean, maybe even Greek way of telling a story. So I enjoyed it for what it was worth. It'll keep going. I think it's like six issues. Uh, I will probably get the next one just to see where it's going. Um, it wasn't too much. Like, so as you can guess, this is more telling of a past story as opposed to the future. So it was really set in the past. So if you can enjoy that kind of thing, if I'm going to tell you a story, if something that happened, go ahead and pick up Crimson Rain. All right, last up from Marvel. We have a Marvel event, right? We have Devil's Reign, okay? And Kingpin has figured out, figured out that the Daredevil has done something to his mind to keep his secret identity away from him. And he doesn't know how, but that's the thing. He's going to go scorched earth. Scorched earth. I don't know why I said earth. Scorched earth to figure out what Daredevil has done. And he's imposed kind of like another uh, um, superhero registration act but just for New York City, where not only do they have to be registered, but any kind of unauthorized use of your powers will result in imprisonment, right? So they can just save somebody from getting hit by a car and they're instantly a criminal, as long if they're in the costume and doing vigilante actions, all right? Or superhero actions for that matter. But they have a lot of heroes in this, a lot of heroes, uh, which I like going to be a lot of characters in here. This, like I said, is an event. You got Wilson Fisk, Kingpin at the head of it, okay? And um, I think it's going to be a really good good series. Chip Zdarsky does a really good job. And Marco Cicchetto is the artist, and I think he's pretty pretty great. So, Devil's Reign. Alright, let's keep it going. I gotta get to C2E2. I'm going a little too slow now. We got Daisy, number one of five. There are Bible tropes in here, okay? There's uh, some Bible stories. Um, they are looking uh so all right let's start over daisy she's like eight foot five in this um she's part of like this group religious group and basically they are planning to take over the world <laughs> so that's what i got out of it so far but there's a lot of religion involved in this book all right daisy kind of questions what's happening there's some